and we're on the way to Adelaide Oval and about what, it was 12 hours ago. The beautiful light. The beautiful light now it's we're in the shade now. <laughs> so talk to us about your journey over because you've uploaded to Twitter saying that I'm responsible for you being at the Adelaide Oval right now. Well Kados, I'm a big fan of yours. I watch everything you do. Oh. Uh, and so I'll be watching this later <laughs> on. Um, I woke up this morning, you sent me a photo of my favourite restaurant, which is in Adelaide, Cafe de Villiers, which is a 24-hour, uh, you know, bakery. You've spoken so highly about it. The Marmalade Boys took me there last night. I had a pie at like did 11... Did you film some? I did. Overlay it. I will. I had a pie at 11, <laughs> 11 o'clock at night, and then um, I messaged you to be like, oh, look, look where I'm at. I didn't know it would inspire a so plane ride over. I woke up, and then so I booked a flight and came, <laughs> and I found a ticket. So this is either... Well, actually, whether we win or lose doesn't matter because I'm going to have some Cafe de Villiers. I'm very excited about it. Now, I'm pretty sure the people know you're a massive D's nuffy. Um, Jeez, yep. we were good last week. Well, we weren't actually great against Port Adelaide, but we got the job done. How are you feeling about tonight's game? Last week was a statement win. Yeah. It was a statement win. Now, today could be a bit of a huge win hangover. Five-day rest. They've been in Adelaide for five days. A couple of sore boys. Sore boys. We've got some thumb injuries. We've got some weird <laughs> ones. But... The inns for Adelaide aren't great. Yeah, I did see that. But last year, Adelaide's best game that they played was in Gather Round. So we could be yes. seeing a completely different Adelaide. And there's nothing worse than a team who has nothing to lose. I watched... And there's Chompers. <laughs> Tony Jones. Tony Jones is there with Tom Morris. I did watch Rog, his heart got broken last year at Gather Round when the Crows kicked the first 10. So hopefully that doesn't happen tonight. Um, enjoy your night and I'll see you at the cafe Likewise, later. Man. And yeah, it doesn't matter who wins, we're going to have a nice village pie. <laughs> It's an unbelievable view. Adelaide Oval is probably one of the best grounds you can go to. Sipping the D's by 32. I think it'll be close up until halfway through the third quarter. And then I think we'll get the job done. Freddie's just taking a one-handed grab on Jordan Butts. Um, awarded the free kick in the end, but he probably completed the mark before Butts spoiled it. Goes back and slots it. It's early days here, but the boys look off. There is a, a steely look in their eyes tonight that they want to set the tone, which is exciting. Do you snag the beers for us? Um, seven minutes into the first term. What's your tip for tonight, mate? Well, I certainly can't base it off the first seven minutes because I didn't see a second of it. You know, the line to get a beer took rather long, but that's right. My tip, I think the Demons win by eight goals minimum. The second Isaac Rankin collected that at ground level, I said goal. He then did a little shimmy and finished. Just one of those plays that makes the extremely difficult look very easy. You give me 100 attempts and I wouldn't do that one. See, I think I'm going to do that a fair bit for the water park animals, but Thomas, up. What Isaac Rankin can do, because he can do better. Actually, I don't know if that's true, because Isaac Rankin is a magician with ball and hand, but Cozzy's just absolutely made the footy talk from the pocket. We're talking about people who can make the extremely difficult look extremely easy. Cozzy makes the impossible look probable, and I've never seen anything quite like it. Quarter time here at Adelaide Oval, and we trail by, I think it's five points, potentially. The scoreboard, oh yeah, five points to the Adelaide Crows. As I said, they've had a lot of scoring shots. I haven't felt that they've been dominant, but to get seven scoring shots on the board is pretty impressive. I think Viney's been great in that first turn. I felt like that we were pretty solid, but just need to step it up a little bit more in this second. Win Wins has been everywhere. Tom Sparrow, big time smother. Christian Petrarca wheels around on the left and slots it from the pocket. And we've been dominant this term. I think we've kicked one goal, four or five points. So we're getting our shots on goal. We've got forward half territory. And it's a much better start than what that last quarter ended on. Rog, you've got a nice little Nina and Pasadena Carlton Footy Club jacket. And I've been sorted out with a Melbourne Footy Club retro jacket. And I'm feeling warm. They've really stepped out the game, the AFL fashion industry. I feel like there was a time where it used to be just categorically wrong and you're a loser if you wear it. Now they're making good gear. The D's, we're up by 17. I'm hoping in the third quarter we can put it to bed because I don't want a heart stopper. Roger, I'm shocked by the portion size. This is one of the biggest bucket of chips I've ever seen. Yeah, there's no way you could get through all of that. I might have to help you out. Well, I wasn't offering. Start of the third, we're halfway through our bucket of chips and the fritter 
slots one from pretty much directly in front. Good forward pressure. We locked it in this 50, and Frida was the beneficiary of that. The Dave's get out to a 23 point lead, start of this third. Frida takes a clunk and goes bang after the Texan kicked one. Good response by the D's in cruise control in this third quarter. Uh, just got to keep putting it on the scoreboard and I'll be happy. Bailey Fridge puts it out to a 32 point lead. Starting to get a little bit tasty. How the hell was that man playing cold stream seniors when he was 20 with a shoe like that? Three quarter time here at Adelaide Oval at the D's lead by 28 points. Professional, professional performance. It feels so far like it's men versus boys. They're getting it done super professionally. There's nothing really to complain about. And um, yeah, super content with how the boys are traveling. Dawson kicks one halfway through the last turn. Potentially shoved Rivers out. Like I'm, I like a bit of body, I like a, you know. I reckon I want that to be paid. Come on. I think noise of affirmation has got the best of Jake Lever there. The umpires, they always want a close game, they want a close finish. And this is a classic example. If that's a free kick, if that's holding the man, he dropped like a sack of spuds, mate. There's no way. Jake Lever in position A. Josh Rochelle tried to get on the inside of him. Jake Lever shuffled Rochelle out of the said, way. Hey, you go on through, mate. It was almost like um, the Spanish ball where, yeah. where the Armada moved, yeah. moves out of the way. He didn't force him to move out of the way. He just touched him on his way because Rochelle came in with that much force. That was bizarre. They paid it and the Crows have kicked two in a row. That was, um, that was very, very dodgy. We've held off a fast finishing Adelaide Footy Club to go four and one in the season. They gave us a little bit of a scare in the last quarter, but we're home and hose. Where's the song, Rog? Here it is now. There it is. And there we have it. The D's get over the line against the Crows. Terrific performance by the lads last night. Super stoked with the win. We're on top of the ladder. We're on top of the live ladder, which is unbelievable. Um, I'm doing a vlog from the whole round, so there'll be more bits and pieces in that, going behind the scenes of what myself and Rog have gotten up to. But I appreciate everyone tuning in, and I'll see you for some more content very, very soon.